Welcome to the instructional video to install 3S power in your armor vehicle. For a full list of compatible vehicles, check the description below. If you are upgrading an armor boost vehicle, you will need a receiver. This is not included in the boost box. Included in your boost box, you will have a decal sheet, a link back to this video, a power module with a 3S brushless motor, a 3S Spectrum Firma 100 amp ESC, some pinions and some screws. To get the installation started, first of all, remove the body from your armor vehicle. Remove all wheels and tires just to make it much easier to work on your vehicle. Then we need to remove the center drive shaft. This is done by pulling it towards the front of the car, pulling it out and then releasing it from the front. Then remove the screw shown here from the lower side of the vehicle. This can remove the block which holds in the power module. Use the Velcro strap to pull the power module brick sideways to release. Next, unhook the wires from the wire retaining clip and unplug the motor wires. Then we're going to remove the power module, raise the clip at the back of the vehicle uh, and it should allow the power module to slide forwards. And then the power module can be put to one side. We will not be using any of this in the upgrade. Next we're going to remove the electronics module. This is done with uh, four screws from the bottom and then one further screw for the steering. Remove the steering screw first and then remove the electronic module retaining screws. Retain all these screws, we will be using them later. With the four electronic module screws removed and the steering screw removed, you'll be able to remove the electronics module from the vehicle. Set the vehicle aside, we'll be working on the electronics module to remove the brushed ESC and replace it with the 3S brushless ESC. The two screws from the top either side of the brushed ESC can be removed. Retaining these screws for future, this will be used to reinstall when we install the brushless ESC. Unplug the servo from the ESC and then remove the ESC, put that to one side. We will be using the aerial from that later on. Open the receiver box lid, uncoil the servo wire and leave it so it goes into the receiver box and we will install the receiver now. A standalone receiver is required for the use with this ESC. If you already have a receiver, feel free to use this one. In this example, we're going to use a Spectrum 315 receiver. This is compatible with either SLT or DSMR radio. Install the servo into channel 1 of your receiver. Now take your firmer 100 amp ESC from your boost box and lay it out as shown on the screen. The three wires to this end are the motor wires including the fan wire and to the right hand side is the power wire, uh, switch and receiver connection wire. We want to install this into channel 2 of the receiver. Next we're going to bind the receiver to our radio. In this example this is the SLT2 radio included with the boost ready to run. We're going to need a 3S battery to give us the power supply. Plug it into the ESC's connector. Next we're going to bind the receiver to our radio, press the large power button on the ESC and immediately triple press and hold the 
a bind button on the receiver to put your receiver into bind mode. Then simply power on your SLT2 radio. This will bind the radio to the receiver. If you're using a different radio system to this example, check out your own instruction sheet for this. Once you are happy, we can power off the radio and the ESC and we can continue to the next step. Unplug the battery, set that to one side. Next, we're going to use some double-sided tape to stick the receiver to the bottom of the receiver box. With the receiver stuck down, next we're going to thread the aerial, thread it through the gap between the servo and the receiver box through to the other underside of the electronics module slotting it through the seal on the receiver box and then we want to slot it back up through the hole uh, for the aerial hole. Expose the correct amount of aerial and then pull the slack back through into the receiver box. Next, we're going to reuse the aerial and aerial retaining screw. Use the aerial to approximate how much length of antenna you need to have exposed. Uh, pull the excess slack back through into the receiver box. We do not want the antenna to be crunched or coiled in the tube. Once we are happy with the length, we can insert the aerial tube over the top of the antenna into the hole. And then we can use the retaining screw in the hole alongside the antenna hole to secure the aerial and antenna in place. Next we begin to bundle the wires inside the receiver box to allow the lid to be closed and the ESC to be installed. But before we do that we need to locate the fan power wire from the triple motor wires and thread that into an exposed channel on the receiver. Any exposed channel is fine. This is just to get power for the motor fan. Once that's plugged in, we're going to thread that through the seal in the receiver box, exposing approximately the amount of cable shown in the images to allow the ESC to be installed on top of the receiver box. This part of the process can be a little bit fiddly, so take your time to make sure that the receiver box seals and wires are aligned correctly and there's no chance of trapping any cables in the lid. Next, we will install the lid onto the top of the receiver box, checking the orientation so that the notch aligns with the cable output. And then once that's done, we're gonna rotate the ESC on top of the receiver box lid with the battery wires over the top of the servo and the three motor wires facing away from the servo as shown. Secure the ESC and the lid of the receiver box with the screws we removed from before. Next, we need to secure the ESC power switch, loop the connector around as shown here, and it is installed next to the ESC on the outside. Use one of the small screws that's provided in your 3S boost box. The 
this completes your electronics module, you now have 3S electronics ready. Let's get this back in the vehicle. Looking to align the steering so that the servo and servo arm aligns with the steering bell crank. We install the four electronics module screws from below. and then reinstall the steering link screw into the bell crank shown here. There is a lock nut on top, uh, just make sure that lock nut still is there. If it's not, reinsert it from the top and screw the screw into the lock nut. The electronics module is nicely secure in the vehicle. Turn the steering to ensure that all the linkages operate correctly. Next, we're gonna install the 3S motor power module. Assembled from the factory is the smallest pinion. This is suitable for all vehicles. For vehicles with smaller diameter wheels and tires, you can use the included bigger pinions to get more speed out of your vehicle. Connecting the brushless motor, we're gonna go color to color, so blue to blue, orange to orange, yellow to yellow. We're gonna start with blue. Uh, this connector just attaches like so, and then the fan connector is also attached to the blue wire. With all of the connectors installed, we can now install the power module into the vehicle. Install it into the chassis and slide it backwards into the spline of the rear diff output. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky, so if you need to rotate the rear axle a little bit to align the spline, uh, this will help. Once you have the splines aligned, the power module will push back nicely and click into place. With the power module installed, we can now route the brushless motor wires, installing them in sequence into the vertical clip in the chassis. With the wires neatly routed and secured, we can now reinstall the block which is in front of the power module. Sliding in from the side, you just want to click that into place. Reinstall the screw from the underside of the vehicle. and then reinstall the drive shaft in the same way we removed it at the start of the build.
before we're ready to rip, we need to calibrate the ESC endpoints. Power up the ESC with a 3S battery. Have your radio powered on and ready to go. Hold the small button as you power on the ESC. There's a small button and a large button. So press and hold the small button and then power on the ESC and wait till you hear the beeping. This is where we set neutral, so don't touch the throttle. Press the button once, then we pull full throttle and press the button again, and then we pull full brake and press the button one more time, which should complete the calibration sequence. For further details on ESC calibration process, check out the online instruction manual for the Firma 100 ESC. With everything calibrated, we can now power off the vehicle and then power off the radio. Unplug and remove the 3S battery. Reinstall the wheels and tires. And then you'll be ready to rip with 3S power. Make sure to go and check out some other Boost Box installation videos to check out how you can further upgrade your Armour RC car.